Minecraft Bedrock Edition 1.19.80 has just been released and you know this is just the beta and previews we've been seeing for the last few weeks all combined into Minecraft Bedrock Edition 1.19.80 so the highlights in this update are that they have fixed the multiple crashes that could occur during gameplay they've added settings to adjust item enchantment glint strength and speed We've taken an early look at cherry blossom trees, armor trims, and many more experimental features, as well as the fact they've fixed over 40 community reported issues. Yeah, so remember, if you find a bug, remember to just uh, report it on the Minecraft Bug Tracker website. Anyways, um, so let's take a more in-depth look about, at everything that we have. Um, in 1.19.80. So, um, first off, we got the player sneaking. So, you now have the ability to sneak under a 1.5 block gap. Um, and that is now called the short sneak toggle. Yeah, and it's going to be a toggle in the settings. And you can enable the toggle to continue testing out the feature whilst they continue to polish it. So, this is still an experimental feature for now. Um, However, you can enable it, and then you'll be able to sneak under 1.5 high blocks, just like in Java Edition. We also have the Cherry Grove, which is a biome with pretty cherry blossom trees, and you can find it in the mountain biomes, usually alongside meadows, which is, is probably where you'll find those. And um, in this biome, pigs, rabbits, sheep, and bees will spawn, and this also comes with a new wood set of cherry blossom trees as well as a new flower, the pink petals, which are going to be scattered everywhere on the ground there. Now, we also have um, further developments in archaeology with Minecraft Bedrock Edition 1.19.80. They've added the trail ruins, as well as the suspicious, suspicious gravel block, and the suspicious sand to a few more structures. They've also added 16 new pottery shards, which makes them a total of 20, which is quite a lot, and that allows for a lot of customization. Next we also have the armor trims on Bedrock Edition, so you can now visually customize your armor with a variety of unique trims, and this will be a functionality that is added to the smithing table. An armor trim has two properties, and that is a pattern and a material. Yeah, and these materials um, are going to be defined by what ingredients you use to apply the trim. Um, that can be, for example, be iron, gold, copper, lapis, emerald, diamond, netherite, redstone, amethyst, or quartz. And the pattern is defined by the smithing template used. And these can be found in various structures all across the world, including in the new trail ruins. Now, these smithing templates um, have been redesigned into a workstation for physical equipment upgrade and modifications. And as I said, these can be found in basically every single um, structure in the world now. And um, depending on the type of structure, you'll be able to find different ones. And um, there are many different armor trims which are unique to certain structures. For example, the rib armor trim can only be found in nether fortresses. Moving on to the netherite equipment. So netherite equipment crafting now also requires a netherite upgrade smithing template. And those can only be found in bastion remnant chests. And there is a guarantee of two of those in every treasure room bastion remnant. Now what this does mean is that it's going to be harder to obtain netherite armor. Which means we'll be playing for diamond longer in survival. Which, uh, which in my opinion is definitely not bad. Anyways, we also have the calibrated skulk sensors, which we have also seen extensively on Minecraft Java Edition in the past few snapshots. This is a new type of skulk sensor which allows you to filter vibration frequencies. So basically, um, different actions that in Minecraft have different frequencies that a skulk sensor or calibrated skulk sensor can pick up. For example, a cow mooing has a different frequency from me jumping, and that also has a different frequency from me walking, and all those also have a different frequency from me breaking blocks, and there's a different frequency for placing blocks too, etc, etc, you probably get it now. Um, and with the calibrated skulk sensor, you can filter out one specific action, and that's the only thing that that skulk sensor will pay attention to. And now, 
um, we also have something called Vibration Renaissance, and this is with, to do with Blocks of Amethyst. So Blocks of Amethyst now have a new behavior when placed adjacent to Skulk Sensors. Yeah, this behavior is called Vibration Renaissance, and it allows players to move vibration frequencies across a long distance. So for example, if I jump up and down here, and there's a Skulk Sensor next to me, and then there's a bunch of amethyst uh, blocks, then they can actually carry that frequency to that village over there and deliver a signal. Yeah. Um, and then we've also just gotten some improvements and quality of life updates with the signs, text editing on both sides, um, stuff like that, you know, being able to um, edit the sign after it being placed in the world, which is of course really nice. Um, and signs can now also be waxed with honeycomb to prevent any further edit to its text. Um, then with that, we also have just a few vanilla parody changes, um, mainly to do with sounds and stuff like that. Um, these are all always small changes, and what vanilla parody is, is it's basically just the act of making things the same on Bedrock Edition and Java Edition, which is something the Mojang devs are really working hard on, and it's always great to see. So, then we also have some fixes and changes, and these are all a lot smaller. This is um, more than 40 different bug fixes and stuff like that. Um, so, I say the biggest one is, is that there's now a wish list in the marketplace, and for the rest there's just been so much bug fixes, um, which is obviously always great to see. We love to see that. I remember, as I said, um, if you ever notice a bug, remember to report it on the Minecraft Feedback website, which will be linked in the description as well as the changelog for this update. Um, and that's basically it. I think that's all I'm going to go over. You can also check out the changelog, which, as I said, is linked in the description if you want to, um, you know, find out more about all the specific bug fixes, as you will also always be able to find every single bug report linked in there as well. Anyways, basically, that was that for right now, though, so thank you ever so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.